All right, welcome back to creating a budget app in WPF using the myapps.metro library to add some styling to make it look a little more modern than just the base, you know, WPF styling that you get with the base controls. If you've been enjoying this or you want to start enjoying it, maybe you, this is the first video of the series that you stumbled upon, feel free to go back to the very beginning when we install the library and use it. And you can just follow along um, up until this point. Also in the description below will be the code in my GitHub repo. I have tags for each video so you can see exactly where in this video we left off. That way if you get confused, you can go back and reference that. And most importantly, hopefully you're at least having fun. And if you are, feel free to subscribe. That way you can follow along with anything that I decide to put out on this uh, channel. And I think that's enough plugging. I think we can hop into it. So today we're going to talk about the list view in WPF. This is already a WPF control, but they add some styling in my apps. So I thought we could touch upon it. Maybe the list view is new to you as well. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's just a way to list out items. And then we're going to up it a little bit. We're going to put a grid view inside of a list view and make it a little more um, useful in our case for our app. So let's just start out with the basic list view. Here's our app. What I think I want to do is I want to put another column in our grid here, our main grid. And I want this part of the app to display all of our budgets that we can go ahead and select. Maybe we want to uh, see more information about a particular budget. Um, if we have a lot of them saved, we can choose which budget we want to see information of. So now that I added this, though, I expect uh, our form will be moved. So let me go find that. So instead of column one, I guess this is column two. Let me see if this is going to be big enough for our form. I'll go ahead and start it and just take a look. So this is what we get. Another thing that just popped into my mind. We need a way to close this. Like, what if you use our accidentally? That that will come in a later video. There's a few things I still <laughs> need to work out, but we're just getting the main functionality out of the way. What if we need to close this if a user accidentally hits this? That's something to add to my list of things we still need to do. But for now, that looks good. Um, let's go ahead and put our list view in this panel right here. And so I'm going to put it right here in the XAML so we can say list view. And where do we want this to sit? We want it to sit in grid dot column zero. So right here. And I'm also going to give it a border of uh, border thickness one just so we can see it like that. And if you wanted to, you can give it a border brush and change the color. But I'm just going to leave it how it is. And so the list view is pretty um, rudimentary. It just shows a collection of list view items. So if I wanted to, inside of this, I could say list view item, right? And the content is test one. Let's copy this. Let's put a few more and we can re uh, or update the content. So we have test one, two, three. And let's just go ahead and look at what the default styling for this is. One thing you can tell off the bat is whenever I hover over it, it gives the accent color as the hover color. And if I select one, uh, we also get the accent color. It's not as light, it's more pronounced like the border. And we can hit control and select multiple if we want. And it's kind of nice if you want to grab more than one or allow the user to grab more than one. So I'm thinking of a way, how do we display all of the saved budgets a user's made to them so they can you know, swap which budget that they're looking at? And really, we need to provide them with a few pieces of information. Like We need to provide them with basically everything in this budget class. We need to show them oh, where to go. We need to show them the start date, the end date, and the amount. Um, just so they can tell which budget is which. And really to have it all in one line like this without like columns or anything, in my opinion, that makes it a little hard to read. So that's where instead of just these basic list view items, let's go ahead and add a grid view inside of this where we can split things up in columns and show all of those properties and actually bind it to our list of budgets that we have already made. So uh, I'm going to do list view dot view. And then inside of this is going to be our grid view. So grid view. 
and we can go ahead and add what columns do we want to show to the user. So each column is going to have its own grid view column. And also, uh, in the list view, before I get carried away, we need to bind the item source. So the item source is going to be bound to that list of budgets. Now this isn't actually going to work in our case, and I'll show you why once we um, try this out. But for now, let's just bind it to budgets. And when I say not going to work, it's not going to know when we add a budget. So if I go ahead and I add one up here, and I fill out the form and I hit create, it's not going to show that it's been created in that list view. And we can fix that easily, but I'll leave it like it is for now. And so now that our whole list view is bound to that collection of budgets, we can specify in each row what columns do we want to show. So we can give each one a header. And let's start out with the start date. And then also, uh, if we wanted to, we could give it a default width. You'll see here in a second what's nice with the grid view is it allows the user to change the width as they like. So maybe I'll just keep it how it is. Um, but what we really want to do is bind to a display member binding. What this is, you have to think, okay, each row is a budget. So in the budget class, what is this bound to? So in our case, it's going to be the start date property, right? So we can say binding to this property like that. And so I'm going to copy this and put the other two that we care about. So not just start date, we want end date. And instead of start date, it's going to be bound to end date for that one. And the header for this one is going to be uh, budget amount. Or if you have a better name, feel free to use that. And the property for that is called budget amount. So we'll say bind to that property for that column. Okay. So let's go ahead and try it. It's not going to get us anywhere, but at least you'll know what I'm talking about. So here is our list view. You can see we currently don't have anything in here, but uh, we probably think, okay, well, if I add a budget, then that will appear over here. And that's a logical thing to think. But however, notice that I added that and it is, it's been added to this budgets list. It's just that this list view doesn't know that it's been added to it. It doesn't know anything about it. So what we actually want to do is go back to our code behind and instead of a list, I'm going to make this an observable collection. And we'll have to bring in a namespace for this. I think it's the object model. Yeah, this one right here. And then when we go to initiate it, instead of a list, a budget, we want to make it a new observable collection. If we hover over observable collection, it should tell us why it's nice. Maybe not. Here we go. Represents a dynamic data collection that provides notifications when items get added, removed, or when the whole list is refreshed. So now it'll notify the list view that, hey, one's got added. Why don't we refresh? this view and show all of the new data or one got deleted, whatever. And something else I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the item source being set here in this YAML. And instead, I'm going to set it after one is added each time. So now, oh, actually, we need to give it a name. So x colon name, let's name it budget list view. And now let's say budget list view dot item source is equal to budgets like that. All right, so now if we run it and we add some budgets, they should show here in our list view. So let's find out. I'll make one for the first week here. And let's say it's 125 for that one here. Now we can see it and let's create a second one make it a different date, maybe the week after. And this budget is 250, just like that. And uh, what's nice, if the user wants, I mentioned this before, they can change the width of each column as they'd like. Maybe one's too big. And if it does take up more space than what is allowed or what's given in the XAML, it adds a horizontal like scroll bar here down here. So we can go ahead and look at all of the data. 
All right, so that's all I wanted to do in this video, show you uh, the basic list view and then one with a grid view in it. And I'm thinking maybe in the next video, we finally add our database so we can save these instead of having to recreate you know, tests every single time. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one.